They, they would, yeah, because what, because what we'd be looking at is a, is is a finals, and if the Feds manage to win that initial exchange, we'll be looking at a bracket reset against against Penguin. So, that, winning two sets against Penguin in a row that is is that is that possible? Uh, I, think I, it I don't is possible, know. But it is going to be so hard. It is, but I mean, based on how the Feds were playing there, if there is any team that can do it, it is them. As much as. Um, White Noise and Penguin are in the same uh, division. If we go off Looty standings, Penguin, surprisingly, despite being as incredible as they are, they actually didn't make playoffs. I mean, they were in a very, very tough group with uh, Enley and Potato. I think it's Potato, even though it's spelt with an E. Um, but, you know, White White Noise made it not only at the group stages, but, as I say, made it to finals and then only went down to Enley. So, White Noise had the strongest showing in Looty. And the feds just took them out. So Penguin are not safe <laughs> by are, any means. Really I, 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 I don't even want to say there's a skill gap really based on how it's been tonight. Because like I say, we recognize players like Trizzy for good reason. There's a reason, you know, you were so excited and hyperventilating. And it isn't just because they're your inkbrush coaches, because they are top tier players. Baja, an absolute menace. But the whole team of the feds is just a beauty to watch they are such a synchronized force and they're synchronized force despite making decisions in split seconds and i i, I don't know how you have to have such good instinctive game sense at that point because call outs alone are not what allows you to be that in sync you just yeah. have to know you just have to see opportunities and feel it of course all of that is going to stand for penguin as well isn't it but this is just oh this is this has been an amazing start to the weekend uh, I, yeah. I've had a chaotic week, folks, and this is just this is like therapy for me. Not gonna lie. Um, I, I hope I hope everyone in chat is having as much fun as we are. Sorry, Spy. Back to you. Uh, no, no, it's okay. And like honestly, as you just said, like with the synchronized gameplay, I feel like that's just the beauty of commentating a uh, high-level Splatoon gameplay. It is just so insane to watch these teams fully in sync and just helping out each other and beating the other team. It is so insane to watch, and it is really i can't imagine to have this kind of uh communication with my teammates and also just like being so in sync with them and it is really really strong what these teams can do it is it is absolutely something to admire and it is you know we, we are looking at peak splatoon gameplay in many ways here and i think you know if you're someone that's newer to the community or you're someone that's interested in competitive but maybe um aren't used to playing at uh, as high a level as this Analyze some of these sets. Look at the decisions these players make and and when they decide to engage, how they respond when they um, are on the cusp of getting wiped or they go multiple players down. There is so much you can learn from um, VODs at this level, um, you know, and, and, and watching watching players at this level play and see everything that goes into their decision making. I, I am seeing some Baja propaganda in the chat. Yeah. Uh, Baja, best Tetra in the West. I mean, that is that is um, a huge statement, but also I can totally see why <laughs> the the respect is on Baja's name. I mean, I, I don't think I would want to say who's the best. I I, I think Baja, Orion, uh, uh, Mia, uh, Mia, we've seen as well in in recent tournaments that there is some the the bar is incredibly high. There are so many Tetris at the moment showing why it is. Um, why it is a weapon that is worth your time to consider and worth having on your team and and the the opportunities it creates for for the rest of your team so <laughs> uh, amazingly as well spy um i don't know if you've got the the full stream up but it is a it's pretty much a 50 50 prediction in the in terms of the channel points about who will take this that oh, is yeah, incredible I, just, I, I see <laughs> no no i'm in the stream i'm in the stream it's okay awesome Awesome, because uh, it is, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I, I <laughs> wait, 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 go on. What, what is happening? We, we've seen so many good maps, so why the hell are we going on Splatstone Scorch Gorge? <laughs> this map doesn't even work. <laughs> what is this uh, game? Well, I, I it's because um, the, the RNG gods decide map one. Well, that's so in, <laughs> in, in that in that sense, you know, we will we will start with Scorch Gorge. I I mean, I don't think it is as bad as people say, but I understand why it's seen as not one of the favourites. And then 
after that we'll be moving exclusively into counter picks so let's see how this goes obviously the feds are coming fresh off a win morale's probably quite high they're all warmed up i'm sure penguin what? have been ready for this as well and we've got double splash double sloshing machine come from them so they are not messing about now this this kind of reminds me of a of, of a clip that was released on Twitter on the Double Productions uh, Twitter, like uh, how nostalgic it is to see Double Splash Double Machine. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of that. Are we really at the point where that was considered the good old days? Yeah, <laughs> the good old days. I think Weef was commentating in that. I'm really hyped for uh, to commentating with her too. I don't think we have to have any fears about Penguin being a bit rusty or cooled down because they have come out absolutely swinging here. Free down on the feds by the point they took that zone. Um, managing to get really nice control over mid and then managing to cause a lot of carnage before one player goes down even. But um, it looks like the feds had a chance to recover there. But then they have lost two players as well. So this is a bit scary. We can see Trizzy doing everything they can to stop the timer. But they're not in a safe position to engage at all until their team regroups. And Penguin are just shutting that down. Cam on the sloshy machine. Very vigilant and doing what needs to be done. Getting backed up by Acer. This is a really strong start by Penguin. Yeah, and I feel like uh, also what is about this map, it's just really hard to get in uh, again once you're kind of spaced out. And I feel like if the feds uh, kind of manage to do this, it'll be a really great uh, set uh, foundation kind of for a push. While Penguin only has like 20 uh, ticks left on the, on their counter right now. And Penguin has a number advantage, so the feds really just have to push in right now. But it is so hard regarding this map, doesn't really have any flanks to go in. And with that, the feds actually got wiped out, and with that, Penguin wins game one. You see why Ooh. this map is now considered horrible? Uh, I mean, that was a bit of an education, yeah, in terms of why it's maybe uh, not, not the best zones map, shall we say. I think, uh, yeah, it, it, but that being said as well... To, to, to ensure that we're kind of not discrediting Penguin in any way, like the to stay alive against um, the Feds consistently is not an easy task, and they did a really good job despite the Feds um, just continuously putting on offensive pressure of not really getting to a point where they had a num. I don't think they had a numbers deficit at any point in the game. I think the worst case scenario for the for Penguin was them being on a two two even swing with the Feds there. So that is a Huge opening statement. Yes, admittedly not perhaps the, the best map to open on. Um, and what this does mean is we now start going into counter picks of maps that are perhaps a bit more favourable and considered a bit more um, engaging for the feds to make their statement and really put the pressure on Penguin. They have had a round again, um, a set against Penguin already, which they lost 3-2. So they do know how Penguin play. They do have a sense of where they're strong and what, uh, what maps they have a preference for so we'll see if that knowledge can help them make some adaptations this set but they are going to have to adapt very very quickly if they don't want to get um yeah put on the put on the back foot big time oh and now they're pulling out the big guns with the splat zones flounder heights as we as we saw in the last set really um the feds are absolutely ballistic on this map we saw baja really doing a great job with the tetras on the enemy's base we also what was surprising to me that was that like the brush was really doing a great job even though i feel like i never really liked brush on this map because it's it's so tall <laughs> yeah i mean brush is not what you think of when you think of a weapon that helps you climb walls quickly is it <laughs> by any stretch but yeah. but i mean what what the brush can do really well is if you do get that pure um the zones. I, I think the ink brush is great for just absolutely raining ink into the enemy street, um, yeah. and then and then going down there and sharking and causing massive distraction. And I think that is what Trizzy did incredibly well in the last set. So we will see um, what they bring here. I can't remember what Penguin kind of tend to run as a comp on Flounder, but you know the Feds comp is quite unique and has been proven to be incredibly effective here. So yeah, it'll be interesting for sure. I'm also. I also think this is uh, really interesting because while I do really enjoy this and uh, these commentatings are always so memorable, I never really remember what comps these teams are playing, except for maybe White Noise because I have been commentating them on Paddling Pool on Wednesday, mm. so I kind of remember that. But my, but I don't know. My memory is kind of twisted and it doesn't make sense. I have no idea. 
I'm weird and I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it is it is hard to keep up at the rate uh, Splatoon moves, but uh, but I as I say I adore it. I think it's a lovely problem to have. We are seeing a flingser coming out for Penguin. I can totally understand why displacement would be so valuable on a map with uh, two zones, especially a map like Flounder, where there's so much sneaky gameplay to be had. Um, the recon information it gives away is also huge. Other than that, double splash and uh, slashing machine, which we can probably refer to as good or reliable. Trizzy looking for a sneaky uh, squid surge there, but then correctly making the decision to back up. Um, a while before there's a first big pick here, which is not what you see with these two teams. So, interesting. Both teams feeling out a bit more, being slightly more cautious. But Penguin doing a really good job of going 3-1 up and getting the upper hand as we look for the first cap. Yeah. And also what I just realized, Trizzy just kind of likes to, uh, like, their opening is kind of always uh, through tunnel. I think I'm gonna have to memorize that considering I play uh, brush and competitive too. <laughs> mm. Yeah, tunnel I think makes the most sense because it gives you the most get out options and it gives you the most avenues to uh, maybe be a bit cheeky. Baja reef sliding down into oblivion there, but um, getting getting stopped by Acer who is just just had some incredible fundamentals. And oh my gosh, a wipeout. That is not, not good if you're the feds. That is not good at all because Penguin already had pretty nice control of mid by the point of that wipeout. And now we're seeing crabs in the most unholy of places. Raining ink. Poor Trizzy doing everything they can but being put, given no options in terms of movement really here. And this is really scary for the feds. Um, you're going to have to find a way to regroup and recover but Penguin is not going to be a team that lets that happen lightly. Yeah, really, the Feds are really spaced out, and I feel like uh, Trizzy and um, uh, Baja really just wanted to kind of double team, but sadly Baja got picked out, so Trizzy just kind of has to swirl around the map, and they actually do get the uh, the cap, so Penguin just kind of uh, got a big penalty coming up for them. And that is incredible like, they recovered from that. Yeah, sorry. I feel like if the Feds <laughs> and, uh, it's okay. I feel like if the Feds just kind of keep up uh, their base right now, they can really turn this around as we see like the uh, penguin only has like 20 ticks left on their counter yeah i mean a, a, a 61 penalty is going to give the feds slight breathing room but we are, are already over two minutes into this match penguin have been so so consistent uh so far despite this being the feds counter pick and i think this is this is just a very scary position because the feds have to play this offensively they can't take too much time to breathe, but they also, they can't just be recklessly going in and getting trades. Like every trade is a win for Penguin right now. They need to be getting, you know, two for ones. And ideally they probably need something close to wipe themselves to get the map control they're gonna need. They have done really well in that exchange. At 1.3 people were down for Penguin. So nice looking zones right now. The Fed's having a bit of breathing room to set something up, but are they gonna be able to hold against a team of Penguin's caliber? That is the question. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we just see that uh, Penguin is kind of uh, forced into their base, but they definitely don't want to go down like that, and we see that the Feds are kind of, especially that splash matic was really spaced out in this one corner, and they really didn't have a chance to kind of counter, as the Flings just kind of stands on this one block to just kind of extend their turf, and they actually rigroll someone. That was savage. I, I got splash it. That it... <laughs> just on that splash o that splash o pretty much saved feds there from quite a huge penalty because they had a numbers disadvantage and they were getting ready for a recap and i think that was chris and i think chris took out two of them so that was very huge and could have been um you know a real play of the game if that led to the feds holding but you know penguin being like they are shrugged it off regrouped again and they have managed to get a penalty so that's pretty painful for the feds but you know one minute on the clock Anything can happen. We've seen that tonight. This is not over for the feds uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I really agree with you. Especially, we just see Baja going in again, but deciding to kind of back out again. I mean, it is really... The odds are really high for the feds to make a mistake, especially because they... I, they would rather tend to panic, especially because there are only 40 seconds left on the clock, but they remain calm and just... We see Trizzy getting some picks. A triple kill. Really well done. They got a wipe out. And right now, there's only 30 seconds left on the clock. With this ginormous wipe out, it really gives the Feds a good opportunity to keep the zone and also to keep this uh, kind of 
control they have going on right now. We Freezy, you absolute maniac. Can I can I just say that that beautiful double? They get they get wiped out, but they got the lead before they got wiped out. So they they're gonna have an opportunity here. Penguin will get a cap, but they have to work through that penalty. I can I have not seen that before. You Where see why I have such a that close to game. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh. You what, realize why I had such a fanboy moment when I saw that Trizzy was playing in this? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we they've got to be careful here though because they're. They're doing everything they can to hold. Obviously, you know, they don't necessarily need a full recap. They just need to hold the zone for long enough, but they've got to be careful. They did have a numbers disadvantage significantly there. There is 10 seconds of the penalty to work through. Um, there, it's one. It's free aside, but it's scary here. All the feds have to do is hold. They need to do everything they can to not go down. Hold on a minute. They've got a numbers advantage, but the penalty was still in Penguin's favor. I can't deal with this, Spy. What is going on? I don't even know anymore. They got a wipe out. What was my screen just now? I'm so stressed out, Chili. I can't deal with this anymore. It, 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 oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> credit where credit is due to both teams. Penguin getting that wipeout, wasting no time capping zone. And they actually seem to win the first couple of exchanges with the feds in that final uh, penalty that they were whittling off. And then it is like the feds just had a moment of clarity and they were like, we've got to be careful, we can't panic, we can't panic. I did see people jump into Baja, Baja waiting patiently for a couple of people before making those engagements. And then just by the skin of their teeth, scraping that win out. But given that that was the feds counter pick, they had to work so, so hard for that. And now Penguin get to dictate where we go and we're going to Museum de Alfonsino. So, oh, I... I, I I don't know. I die. It's, it's silly. I can't understand you fully. I feel like I'm gonna pass out after this. I'm just gonna go to bed and just sleep for 15 hours or something. I can't deal with this anymore. This is so stressful and yet so much fun to watch. Like, really, I didn't know what to say anymore, so I just decided to freaking scream. I didn't know what to do anymore. Really, the zone was like they just won because like they won because the overtime was over, and I was like, "What the hell? They're gonna cap the zone now!" And they got a wipeout at the same time, and I really didn't know how to express my feelings more than just scream. I, I and I, I feel yeah, I, I hear you, I hear you, and it just comes from you know a real love of the game and and a dopamine rush, you know, quite unlike anything else. I, I've never played a game like this that has, you know, that has immersed me in such a way and captivated me in such a way. It is such a charming game to look at. It is so high paced, the action. And I, you know, I know there has been a little bit of negativity in the community because, you know, there's a lot of talk about how Splash has dominated the meta. Um, and I think then a lot of people feel they have to use Splash when they're looking at, you know, a lot of high level gameplay to keep up. Sets like this prove that you can think slightly outside the box and still get incredible results if, if you dedicate to it. And I, you know, I think it is, yeah, it, it's just been amazing to watch. Um, it's been an absolute privilege to be a part of this tournament and, and, and these games tonight. I love the switch up. We've got Baja going from Tetris to Flingsa. Now that is not a weapon change you see every day. Especially Penguin going for triple splash as we've seen before. They, again, they really want to win this right now, and I feel like they could really overhaul them because especially right now, Penguin has a number advantage. There are two people down on the side of the Fed, so they already gained control of the zone right now. Going in fully aggressive mode again. Trizzy trying to do their best to defend against the crap, but sadly they do go down. And right now, they, uh, the uh, Penguin kind of uh, dictates this match already, even though it's only it's not really been one minute up until now. And we see the spa going for the missile spam, but they actually get countered out by that crap tank. Really, that Penguin is dictating this game. What is going on? Yeah, I, I think dictating is the is is the right word. I, I I don't know if this map is a bit rustier for the feds or if, like you say, you know, Penguin counter picking it just means this is one of their best. But um, Penguin got in so quickly and I, it flooded, absolutely flooded the feds. For, I mean, Chris there does get a really clutch pick. That's not a bad starting point, but we need to see this timer stopping. Very nice play, Chris, again there, managing to take out that splash in mid. That has been the gateway 
to a bit of a recovery and the Fed's getting on the board. But like you say, Spy, uh, Penguin started that so strong. Whittling the t timer down to 17 so quickly is, is no laughing matter at all. And somehow, even though I thought that the Feds had a slight advantage there in terms of how the, you know, the slays and the trades are working out, Penguin managing to get the cap again. So, you know, the Feds not able to start catching up with this timer. We have three minutes on the clock and we know from watching these teams start that anything can happen. But Penguin are looking very strong here. They look like they know this map well. They know where they want to position themselves and they know how to capitalize when they get the numbers advantage. Yeah, the machine and the, and the brush were just kind of switching plays. <laughs> the machine was jumping into mid and the brush was jumping onto their plat, but though the machine, uh, no, no, not the machine, the brush does go down. And again, uh, the feds have a number disadvantage, so they kind of have to watch out for Penguin maybe trying to push into their base, even if it could be very risky. Especially because while it seems like the penalty is 30, which does seem kind of high it can go down so easily and really the feds are so conflicted because really only the brush is left and right uh, just like that they have to kind of re uh, rearrange uh, th themselves and kind of uh, get more control even though the booyah bomb is completely going onto Baja they don't even have a chance of picking up the pace especially yeah. because that one flashes is camping there and there's only 10 t ticks left on Penguin, and really they just gotta push in right now or else this could really be something that, it, like the match could be for Penguin at just like that it is. They really dictated this match and this, it's the only word I can describe this with. Yeah, I, I think that, that there was a couple of aspects to that. I mean, first of all, Penguin, you know, can look at that comp and very quickly see that Baja is the catalyst for how the feds are going to be able to recover the zone and how um, you know the feds are going to get back in the map and they did everything they could to shut Baja down there I think um, on, on Flingzer. Not necessarily for any fault of Baja's own either, I, I think just really really good coordinated gameplay from Penguin knowing that they couldn't afford to let Baja sit comfortably and farm missiles comfortably. Um, on top of that I think when there was the more heated engagements in a lot of instances, either Penguin took out slightly more players or they took out multiple of players on the Feds team at the same time. And that meant the map control was just gradually, um, you know, creeping more and more into, into Penguin's favour throughout that game. So a very, very strong showing on their counter pick. They're not letting the fact that they had that uh, Flounder Heights game stolen from them. Um, tilt them in any way, um, as, as you would expect of a team of Penguin's calibre. Um, but I do note that um, the feds were very, very quick to lock in Umami Ruins. Um, so they clearly feel confident here, even though this is our newest uh, map. They they clearly feel like they, they, they know what they're doing and they're really ready to hash it out with Penguin. So again, feds in a little bit of a bind. They are not close to done. Yeah, and I feel like Umami Ruins is really good for such an aggressive comp because while it is rather small, it gives players a little bit more playroom to kind of get picks and also it just seems like for weapons like uh, Tetras where they could haul out a lot of space this is a map that could really th that they could really benefit from even if Penguin does decide to go to the triple splash again <laughs> and just to confirm folks this is a best of five so this is Penguin uh, seeking their tournament points, seeking their opportunity to close it out. They, I am sure, um, you know, respect the feds. They have seen how scary the feds are. Look how quickly they, the feds have torn through Penguin's offense and forced uh, the crab tank to jump out as soon as it was done. So the feds uh, looking a very different beast on this map already. But the feds absolutely need this game. If Penguin win here, that is that. Penguin will be our tournament champions and the Feds run in Triton Cup will come to an end. But as we've seen with the Feds, you cannot count them out until it is absolutely over. And uh, they have had very good control of the zone so far, despite the fact that they are now at quite a significant numbers disadvantage. Yeah, but as we've seen, uh, while uh, 49 is a really good startup, the, uh, Penguin could still really turn this around, as you've said before, that these teams have really shown us so many comebacks. And just like that, we shouldn't rule out anybody. Even if the Feds really try to uh, go in aggressively again, as we see Baja just doing their Tetra kind of style, 
dying because of the air. I don't know what killed him. <laughs> the, the, just the crab tank on Penguin hauling up more space. And it seems like the feds are really down on the number disadvantage. And it was a wipeout light, you could say. I don't know, because yeah. what just jumped out. And right now, Penguin does have the lead. And Trizzy just kind of trying to be a sneaky little folk. And uh, hauling up the <laughs> crab tank and getting the pick. But it is a crab tank, so they do have to push in again, I think. Especially yeah, because... I it's only down to 20. I like that play by Trizzy. I thought it was brave, but it was necessary based on that timer. The crab tanks are coming to an end, but unfortunately, Penguin have managed to make uh, most of it. And that is a wipeout. And is that going to be it, folks? Look how bunched Penguin are. And my gosh, they... <laughs> wow. I, I feel... I guess since they were slightly angry about losing that flounder game, because they've been terrifying... Um those last couple of games and as much as that might feel a bit of a premature close I, I think you know that is, that is Penguin for you that is why Penguin are you know a top tier Division X team because they are incredible and they don't get phased and they are wonderfully consistent so that is gonna be your Triton Cup champions folks Penguin are gonna take the crown but my gosh the feds what entertainers spy right and what what incredible players as well yeah really that flounder zones match just completely ruined my mental state mm. <laughs> but in a positive way you could say it was so intense there was a lot of thought put into this there was a lot of coordination and it was i was so i'm so glad that i got to commentate this really yeah i i, I it's been an absolute privilege hasn't it i'm i'm really glad i'm glad you know, we got to commentate together. Really glad you could join me. Um, folks in chat, amazing to have so many of you join us. It has really felt like as a community, we've come together to to spectate some absolute carnage this evening. And, you know, um, I, I love the GGs in chat. I love the re respect for the feds and the incredible, you know, for the incredible entertainers they've been. Um, I think people that feel like the meta has to just be constant splashes to work we've seen you know we've seen a lot of teams provide some evidence to the contrary for that tonight and yeah i mean that has been adrenaline central i will be certainly looking back on that flounder heights game and <laughs> i yeah. think there, there are so many wonderful sets that um you know dapples will upload these to um you know their youtube and there'll be opportunities to watch these again if you want to yeah, just just taking the action. Of course, there'll be the Twitch pod as well. But yeah, wow, what a what a tournament! What a tournament! What a way for Triton Fifty One to to <laughs> yeah to yeah. I'm so glad I I could come and take this with you, Spy. It's been so fun. yeah. I'm I'm really glad to. Also, uh, again, I just want to shout out Majora for being this great streamer that we've been accompanied with. Thank you, Majora, for being such an amazing guy. And I wonder how your reaction was on that Flounder Zones web. I'm I'm gonna squeeze you out after this, okay? <laughs> yeah and yeah i think of course that i think there's been a lot of focus on um you know the feds because uh in, in terms of a comp even though some of the players are known the team itself kind of wasn't an name we recognized coming in and we seeded them quite low um the, the, you know we, we need to obviously acknowledge <laughs> just yeah just how incredible penguin are and how um how consistent they are in everything and that you know this is not a uh disappointing end in the sense that penguin are just a brilliant team they deserve the respect they deserve the w they've also been thoroughly entertaining um just yeah in a way where we almost expect them to to, <laughs> to be entertaining and of that caliber so yeah massive ggs to everyone um amazing to see the spectrum of talent in the splatoon community um and just before we go to a close uh spy where where can we find you you can find me on Twitter at Dr. Spy LOL. No, I don't think League of Legends. I just think it's funny. But you don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, Chili, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on Twitter, ChiliBoy underscore Splat. Um, I'm, I'm there often just kind of commentating on like sets and games or uh, normally enjoying every time there's a patch just seeing the... Uh, Splatoon discourse and how heated it tends to get, but how wonderful the Splatoon season. community as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can find me there. Um, and yeah, I think um, that'll be it for us tonight. 
just thanks so much for joining us folks it's been such a fun tournament and uh, yeah we will look forward to seeing you all again for more amazing Splatoon action soon See take ya. care everyone <laughs>